بسم الله الرحمن الرحیم my dear students and fellows and friends and those, those who are appearing in the examinations MCPS, FCPS or MRCPs or those who are in third year, fourth year and finally in MBBS. Now we are actually taking the classes, this is a module, modular type of a you know, uh, type of teaching which I am going through and that is the module is infection and the, and the disease and it is called infectiol infectiology. Now we are actually um, covering the gram negative basili and one basilis of importance in humans is Clipsilla pneumoniae. Clipsilla pneumoniae, a very uh, common organism in atypical type of pneumonia. It's atypical pneumonia because community acquired pneumonia is of two types, typical and atypical. So this is a atypical type of the community acquired pneumonia. This organism is also important as far as concerning the other diseases as well, mainly the urinary tract infections. Now I am Professor Ali Heather and I am the uh, Global Honorary Professor of Medicine. Because of without any fame or I do not want any economics. This is free channel just for the sake of the knowledge. Those people who want to gain knowledge. And I have already said previously these organisms of microbiology should be covered if you are giving any examination like this. Specifically, I am interested in those who are uh, going to examine uh, for the FCPS internal medicine or FCPS in pharmacology or FCPS in ENT or FCPS in infect infections and disease, infectiology that is. Well, my way of presentation is usually on the clinical side. I'm a clinical side person that I want to, you know, um, at attach the in clinical microbiology to clinical medicine in my lectures. The introduction is here is that Clipsilla is a gram-negative bacteria. Clipsilla bacteria are normally found. This is the uh, actually reservoir of infection that in human intestines and human stool. They are commensals in these situations. There is a small intestine, a large intestine, it is a part of this. So it is one of the coliform bacteria. When these bacteria get into the other areas of the body, other than that, they can cause infection. Now this type of, uh, you know, uh, uh, organisms which are present in the body, but they do not harm the body. They are called commensals. So they are commensals to a GI tract lower, da lower down. And uh, another important point about the Clipsilla is concerned that they also commence on the swell, on their body, uh, and the, around the genitalias. And uh, these are in the, in the anterior nerves, and uh, in the throat, uh, I mean, in buccal cavity. And these organisms are usually found as commensals. They do not cause disease, actually, in these situations if the person is not uh, immunocompromised. Famous uh, as Trebrellendus uh, pneumonia. Now, pneumonia is concerned, that is atypical pneumonia, this is uh, Clepsilian pneumonia. It's famous for this scientist's name, Trebrellendus pneumonia. Urinary tract infections are associated, blood stream infections. Any infection go inside and will follow the inflammatory pathway as uh, bacteremia to uh, the septic shock. The wound or surgical site infections because it is present on the and around the skin and if it is septicemia then meningitis can occur. Now Clipsida is a significant cause of the healthcare associated infections. This is important as a what is called a so called nosocomial type of a 
pneumonias or nosocomal type of diseases. Sometimes the bacteria like Vixilla change so that the certain antibiotics don't kill them because of the change in, in the bacterial uh, antigenic uh, properties, mutation that is, that the, the antibiotics usually which are used in the upper respiratory tract or the lower respiratory tract infections, uh, they uh, actually uh, they become resistant uh, type of uh, organism now for them, those who are treating and difficult to eradicate from the body. Increasingly, Kipsila has been found to be resistant to the class of the antibiotics, the very, very strong antibiotics they are. They are called carbipenems. It is not very common, but it is, it is, we see that the carbipenems and meripenems, for example, meripenem is available here in Pakistan, and it is a very costly drug, and it is useless in these conditions, and where the resistance occurs. Now, these are beautifully demonstrated in the microscopic examination. This is the examination of the high power field. Look, that would you stick people like that in a kebab or maybe cow or scoop a jew and a chuddy chuddy booty and a lot of or salah square the key. It's three cases. You segmentation is another right. Or is it because you have a segmentation is another right? Scoop or the key. You be mature or a year. ये हाली मिच्योर है ये देखिए चीन बनी हुई है ग्राम नेगेटिव बेजलाई की इसके अंदर पहले ये ग्लोबलर होता है फिर ये दूसरी स्टेजेस में जाता है और फिर ये चीज बन जाती है और साइंटिफिक लाइफ की डिसीजन इसकी ये है कि ये तो बैक्टीरिया ठीक है एंड इट इस ग्राम नेगेटिव बैक्टीरिया एंड इस कम्स इन Gamma proteo bacteria and other classification. It is included as a coliform bacteria as anterior bacteria family is anterior bacteria and uh, the genus is Scripsilla. One of the species is Scripsilla pneumoniae. The other type of the Scripsilla are not very important. Other than that, they are also present subspecies. Of pneumonia, other than the subspecies, what is called the Ozono, uh, the Kipsila Ozoni, Kipsila Regens, uh, and Kipsila Rhino, Skilero, uh, Dermatai, skin infections. These are the other type of species that are also present, but we are focusing on, on this Kipsila pneumonia. Transmission is that to get the Kipsila pneumonia infection, a person must be exposed to the bacteria. That's why. That's why. In other words, the Clepsila pneumonia must enter through the respiratory tract, from the buccal cavity to the, the, the pharynx to the larynx, trachea, bronchi, and lower down. And it enters into the body in the blood, and it's called the blood steam infection. Again, this transient bacteremia, bacteremia, septicemia, the cirrus, pyemia, sep sepsis, septics shock, etc., etc. It may be transferred through the person-to-person -person contact, for example, contaminated hands of the healthcare personnel or other people by the patient-to-patient. -patient. For example, if you are doing the, some procedure in the throat and, uh, or dental surgery or you are doing the ventilation procedures, the possibility that this bacteria may be activated and penetrated to the lower respiratory tract. And the role of the transmission directly to the environment of the patient is controversial, actually. It is controversial. Matter. It is not coronavirus. But when it is spreading in the hospital base, you have to wear, wear the mask. You have to wear the mask, and that is, it is a nosocomial type of disease, and it is then. And it is droplet infection. The patient in the healthcare setting also may be exposed to the Lipsila pneumonia when they are on ventilators, IV catheters, or you are using uh, the, uh, the what is called as cystoscopic procedures, etc. Uh, in this way, the, it will ascend in the urinary tract and it can cause the damage to the uh, ureter and the calcium system 
and uh, it can cause the what is called as the pyelonephrosis. The microbiology of the capsular pneumonia is a gram negative. It is non motile, it is not motile, encapsulated, but lactose fermenting. It is non lactose fermenting. Nahi hai ye. It is lactose fermenting. That is why it is separate. Ho so lactose uh, fermenting uh, bacteria hai, aapko coliform ke wo alag karne padenge. Or fermenters ko alag karne padenge. Non fermenters and fermenters. It is facultative anaerobic bacteria. So less oxygen is needed for its survival. It is a rod shaped bacterium. It is a rod shaped but in a different stages I have shown you. It appears as a, as a mucoid lactose uh, fermenter on the McConkey agar if you culture it. It is a mucoid lactose fermenter on the agar. Although found in the normal flora of the mouth, skin and intestine as commensals, it can cause destructive changes to the human and animal lung if aspirated specifically to the alveoli. If it reaches to the alveoli, it will definitely damage the alveoli and it's called the alveolar inflammation and uh, this the pneumonia that is called because alveolar type of the uh, infiltration is there and uh, then resulting in the bloody means the, there is the possibility of hemoptysis brownish or yellow colored jelly like this put them, just like in the cases of the uh, what is called bronchiectasis in the clinical setting it is the most significant uh, member of the genus Clipsilla and of the uh, anterior bacteria C uh, family Clipsilla oxyota oxytoca and Clipsilla renoscleromatatu a metas, metas have also been demonstrated in human clinical specimens. In recent years, the Clipsilla species have become important pathogens in the nosocomial infections. I have seen actually the secondary invaders in, in cases of the coronavirus infections. I have seen one or two cases of the, uh, because it was cultured in the sputum, very heavy, heavy culture is power, was positive in the coronavirus infection, not primarily as a secondary invader. It naturally occurs in the soil and about 30% of strains one can fix on nitrogen in anaerobic conditions. So it is a nitrogen, it can fix nitrogen as a free living uh, diazotroph, its nitrogen fixation system uh, has been much studied. How it fixes it, the nitrogen, rather releasing the nitrogen, it is fixing the nitrogen. That is a, a diazotroph type of a free diazotroph and is of agricultural interest as the Clipsilla pneumonia has been demonstrated to increase crop yields in the agricultural conditions. Because it is a now reservoir of the ammoniated compounds. It would form the ammoniated, ammoniated type of compounds and which will definitely be good for the uh, agriculture agricultures and the fields. Concerning. It is closely related to the Clipsilla oxytoca from which is distinguished by being indole negative, it is bacteria, and by its ability to grow on the uh, malizitos but not the uh, three hydroxy vitreous. It is not important bacteria in the humans is concerned, it may be possibility of its uh, uh, pathogenicity in the animals. Now this is in the lower power field, you can see the short basal eye, uh, you know, it is flat basal eye and they are negative bacteria, it is palpation color. On the agar media, which they have used, a specific agar is used, which lactose is also uh, added in it, and this type of colonies are seen, zigzag nature. They are spreading like this on the agar and it is cultural like this. In the in the in the high power micro field, again the same type of the organism which I have shown you previously can easily be seen on this uh, culture. And sensitivity can be done by this methodology. Epidemiology that the illness most commonly affects the middle aged and older men, and often it is more often women with debilitating diseases because it is. It is very present in the genitalia, around the genitalia. 
And that is why the women are mostly affected. As vaginitis, it can cause, dysrositis, it can cause, pelvic, pelvic, uh, pelvic inflammatory disease, it can cause. The patient population is believed to have impaired respiratory host defenses, including the persons with diabetes specifically, alcoholism, malignancy, and COPD, and patients who are of the glucocort therapy and renal failure. And certain occupational exposures such as the paper mill workers, paper mill, where the papers are made. It is disease of the, again, is occupational disease. It may be an occupational disease. So that is why uh, uh, you can classify it with the environmental pollution diseases. Other than that, it is maybe I have already said about the nosocomial infection. If it is spread, it is spread like a wildfire in the in the hospitals. In addition to the pneumonia, klebsiella can also cause infection. Urinary tract that is very important. Again, next is lower biliary tract and surgical wound size. And the range of the clinical disease includes the pneumonia, which is very important. Fredlander's pneumonia, thrombofluid, what is the inflammation of the veins superficial veins, urinary tract infection, and that is already mentioned out, is the UTI may ascending type of the urinary tract infection. Call it status, it can cause diarrhea and respiratory tract infection. Moon infection, osteomyelitis, meningitis, because septicemia can be launched at any site in the body. And bacteremia, because of the bacteremia and it can cause sepsis and septic uh, shock for patients with invasive device in their uh, bodies contamination of the device becomes a risk Th there are many devices like neonatal wall devices respiratory support equipment urinary catheter devices put patients and increase risk of this uh, type of infection also the use of the antibiotics can be affected that increases the risk of the nosocomial infection the Klebsiella bacteria and the sepsis and the septic shock can follow entry of the bacteria into the blood. That is why it is important. Uh, again, I'll repeat that uh, at one time in something in 1993 or 4, uh, in the night, uh, I requested the uh, male nurse to put catheter uh, in to catheterize the patient. He said that it will be catheterized, no problem because they, did, they, they are doing this procedure. So I went to the uh, dinner and then when I was coming and passing through the ward, I s saw that the sweeper was uh, actually uh, doing this procedure. So I became angry because as a house officer, I said that, what are you doing? He said, daily I said, I am doing this procedure, the easy one. Why, you want to do it? And I call the whole of growth. The thing is that you are doing, you don't know what is hygiene exactly, and sepsis and sterilization, etc. In our country, you know, no, I mean, law is implemented and, uh, you know, corruptions are at the peak level and that is why uh, these type of the clepsilla, bacteremia, septicemia will cause high mortality rates. In another important uh, you know, aspect of the disease that I already said that the diseases, all diseases rather, may possibility the initiating factor may be some microorganism. They claim that in their studies, because of the molecular mimicry between HLA-B27, the two clepsilia surface molecules may be the cause of the encolizing spondylitis. Because of the molecular mimicry, the antibodies are formed and they act on the site as causing the enclosing spondylitis. Interesting disease. The Klebsiella ranks second to Escherichia coli, which is a very important organism of urinary tract infection. In the older people, it is the next one is Klebsiella. In the young ones, again the Escherichia coli, it may possibly the other one, Chilmaria trochomatis. It is also an opportunistic pathogen for the patient with chronic pulmonary COPD patient. You know, they, they, they are usually have a repeated type of chest infection and bronchitis is also. The enteric pathogenicity, nasal mucosa atrophy, 
and Reynolds scleroma, which is important problem, is in the ENT boards uh, uh, also. New antibiotic resistant strains of the Klebsiella pneumoniae are appearing now. That is why the even it is resistant to the carbapenems. In the physiology, it is typically due to the aspiration and alcoholism. Again, it is a risk factor. Aspiration. A man is aspirated to aspirate in the old age. He has to go to the food and he has to go to the house. He has to go to the mobile work. And he has to eat his father. He has to eat his father and he has to aspirate him. Now, as soon as he has to aspirate him, he has to eat his food. और दम निकलने लगा उनका अब मैं फॉरेन बॉडी के तौर पे ये ज़्यादा काम कर रहा है भी और वो थोड़ा दो का धक्का लगा वो नीचे चला गया इट विल कॉज दिल्ली पॉडल टाइप ऑफ निमोनिया एंड एस्पिरेशन निमोनिया सो इट इस वन ऑफ द कॉज ऑफ द एस्पिरेशन निमोनिया इट मेन इट मे बी द कॉज ऑफ द � and COPD, bilateral bronchitis is also. In terms of the pathophysiology, the clipsilia, pneumonia, the neutrophil myeloperoxidase defense against the clipsilia pneumonia is often seen. The neutrophil is the main thing. You find the neutrophilia in this condition, not lymphocytosis. This will definitely the second you can say line of defense. If it is seen or it it uh, it arrived in the alveoli, so the oxidative inactivation of the elastase is involved. Is the inactivation of elastase it is involved with the lipoprotein binding protein help transfers bacterial cell wall elements to the cells. So neutrophil myeloperoxidase is the organism. It is, is part of it. And then, if the neutrophils have, they are the main killers of this second defense, because it cons it consists or it contains myeloperoxidase, easy to approach, the neutrophil activity, and oxidative inactivation of elastase again is involved. The elastic tissue is destroyed, reticulin tissue is destroyed, and while the the lipoprotein binding protein with it. The transfer the bacterial cell wall element to the cells. So inside the cell, alveolar cell, then they will go into the uh, in the blood as and the septi and the bacteremia and septicemia. The clinical presentation, the most common condition caused by the bacteria outside the hospital is pneumonia. Is atypical pneumonia, typically in the form of the bronchopneumonia. The do means that both lobes are involved. It is not lobar. It is also called the bronchitis. It is acute bronchitis. These patients have an increased tendency to develop the lung abscess. Okay, this is a very important point. If there is a lung abscess after the pneumonia, the possibility of the clipsilla pneumonia will be there. The first organism which causes the lung abscess is Staphylococcus, Staphylococcus, Pneumococcus, and then and leading by the clipsilla pneumonia. It will cause cavitations we did not seen with the other bacteria of this side. The empyema thoracis and it can cause the pleural adhesions. So it is it can cause pleural thickening, it can cause pleural effusion. It has the death rate around fifty percent even with antimicrobial the mortality rate is fifty percent which is very high uh, mortality rate. This is a typical radiologically PA view chest. You see the, the lung field here are involved, both lung fields are involved. And there is the, uh, what we call as the, uh, the, the hypertensiolysis will be there, compensated in the sema, in this part. This is what is we call, this is the, okay, you see this. There is single opacity which is seen, it is seen here in the, Bronco aerogram patterns, aer aerogram patterns are there, and it means that it is it is here and here and here and here and here. It is non-reticulated type of a 
single opacity. That is permanent nodule. But here it will cause a hemorrhagic type of pneumonia, which is seen with this disease. And look, there is a formation of here, the possibility of the pleural effusion. I already said it. If you will, if you will uh, aspirate it, it will, it will be by a pus cells, a lot of pus cells are seen in this case. And that is why I call this condition as empyema thoracis are very commonly associated with this condition. So it is the Lepsila pneumonia is a, uh, to tend to cover up a characteristic sputum. It is mequoid in nature and jelly-like in nature. It has got a streak of blood in it. As well as got the high rate fever, nausea, tachycardia, vomiting, the common because the infection is there, it is a part of this. The Clausian pneumonia tends to affect people with involved underlying conditions. Alcohol alcoholics are more prone to develop. If there is MCQ appearing in any examination, that alcoholism, the risk of the pneumonia, what type of the pneumonia you have, you sell the atypical pneumonia causing by Clipsilia pneumonia. This is the correct choice. Investigation you will do here there, in our settings, for example. Actually, the most susceptible testing for is like extended spectrum beta lactamase. Uh, this is the test which uh, they are doing because the, if you are giving the antibiotics, it will not work. And that is why they are doing the ESBL, extended spectrum beta lactamase, along with the uh, means the sputum or blood sensitivity test. CBC, you will find the leukocytosis ESR will be raised and there will be uh, the reactive thrombocytosis. And uh, urine, eye, you will show the pus cells and the culture will demonstrate you the clipsilla. Blood culture, if it, the antibiotics prior, prior are not given, then chances of blood culture positivity are more. And again, the vaginal swab can also, you will see the culture result. This put on maybe culture also for sensitivity should be done with this ESBL. Chest radiography, first of all, it is a routine radiography. If you find this type of X-ray, which I have shown you, then you can go for the CT scan to see the more uh, anatomical, you know, position of the pneumonia. Treatment is that is treated with the third and the fourth generation cephalosporin usually in most part of the world. Quinolone, the second generation or third generation of carbapenems. Now it is resistant to the carbapenems in certain geographical areas, not all. Monotherapy is just as effective as combination therapy in clubs in pneumonia because newer agents are used. Why are, why are, why are we not using the, the amoxicillin, this chronic acid in this condition? Because it is a gram-negative organism purely and it has got the augmentin that is. The chlorinic acid plus uh, amoxicillin is not very effective. For the gram negative, you have to give these uh, cephalosporin, which are the fourth generation or third generation. You can give the monobactams, quinolones, second generation or third generation, rather, I would say. Third generation is moxifroxacin. You will give the monotherapy. First try, which is common cephalosporin, cephaloxin, for example, or cephotaxin, will be used. If it's not effective in three days, then switch to the other one, and then switch to the other one. The dual therapy are not, not usually needed here, although other researchers insist on the dual therapy to decrease the mortality. The other people said if you use the dual therapy, the possibility of mortality will be lower down in high-risk patients, from diabetic patients, and those are immunosuppressed patients, in HIV, HIV patients, you use dual therapy. When you normally, in the immunocompetent person, we use monotherapy. So, there is another version of it. It is the hypervirulent clepsidia pneumonia. It is a rather recent variant that is significantly more virulent than classical clepsidia pneumonia. Just, just like hepatitis E. Although it is usually not very, you know, destructive type of a hepatitis, 
but one of the hyperbilinin type of the uh, strain of the hepatitis E is found in certain countries, also in Pakistan. It will destroy the liver. It will cause the acute form of hepatitis very, very, uh, in a very uh, less duration of time. While the hyperbilinin pneumonia is an opportunist pathogen possible for the nosocomial infections, hospital-based infection that usually affect the immunocompromised patients. Now this is clinically more concerning since it also causes the disease in the healthy individuals also. It can infect virtually every side of the body. If it is responsible, then the, it will burn, you will light, you light a, a, a wildfire in the hospital. And many of the uh, patients and health personnel will be affected just like coronavirus. The genetic traits that lead to this phenotype uh, path uh, pathotype are included in large virulence, plasmid and potentially on additionally conjugative element. The research is going on about the hypervirulent type of the clipsal pneumonia. Here I will use the triple therapy from the gram-negative organism. The prevention is that the, the patient's healthcare personnel must follow the specific infection control precautions. If it is positive in one person, it means that it will spread in the hospital. Alcohol-based hand rub, soap and water if hands are visibly soiled. Alcohol-based hand rubs are effective against the gram-negative gram uh, visual other than that. And wearing gowns and the gloves and masks and the, when they enter the rooms uh, where the patients and the clipsular illnesses are housed, which means that you have to take care just like in OT, option theatre, you are going in the operation theatre. So you use the mask, you use the, you know, uh, the specific uh, boots to go inside and the clothes, just like this. Because it is, it will, if it occurs, it will spread like a wildfire. So strict cleaning procedures should be, uh, uh, should be obtained and practiced. To prevent the spread of infection, patients also should clean their hands of often, including just like coronavirus. They have to wash often before preparing or eating food, before touching their eyes, nose, or mouth, just like coronavirus. Before and after changing the wound dressing or bandages, specifically the, the dressers, and using the restroom. After using the restroom in some part, the possibility are there that in the hospital, the restroom, and then the, uh, you know, uh, visitors are get, are there to see the patient. They have to wash their hands. They do not touch the nose, and they wear masks. After blowing their nose, coughing or sneezing, these persons, after blowing or coughing or sneezing, their the hands should be washed three times. After touching the hospital surface, say such as bed uh, rails and bedside tables, uh, door knobs, remote controls or the phone I mean, the mobile phone, there are a lot of eclipsy uh, level with there because it is spreading like wildfire. So you have to be very careful to touch these things when, when there is a nosocomial type of a, a problem in the hospital and this is a preventive measure. So prevention is better than cure. If, the, if it is present, present, it's a usual practice we do other than uh, eclipsy also. So this is the discussion, although it is a dry type of a discussion, I know that people do not like this type of a discussion. But you should know about the Clipsilia pneumoniae, what, what is this bacteria, what are the importance of the bacteria, what it causes, how will you investigate, what are the lab findings, and uh, how will you proceed on for the management purposes. I wish you good luck, and I'll save again. وما علينا إلا البلاغ السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته